As one meanders down the list of national parks, heading towards the end of the alphabet, they will find some of the most famous and largest parks in the United States. Yellowstone, Yosemite, Zion. But there is one park that completely blows them out of the water in terms of size. And it's in Alaska, because of course it is. Welcome to the wilderness, baby, because today we're taking a look at Wrangell St. Elias National Park. The northern taiga forests found at Wrangell St. Elias are home to a large variety of fascinating creatures, including mammals like doll sheep, a close relative to the bighorn sheep, black bears and grizzly bears, and smaller animals like the pika, varmint, and coyote, which live along the forests and tundras of the national park. One endangered species at Wrangell St. Elias is the stellar sea lion, which have possibly been affected by the recent increase in cruise ships in the sea portion of the park. If you take a trip to this park and happen to see a dead or injured sea lion, make sure to report it to park authorities so the special creature can once again thrive in its chilly environment. In the category of avian creatures, bald eagles and great horned owls call the park home, as well as smaller birds like the hairy woodpecker and dark-eyed junco. For fishermen, several species of salmon and trout live in the park's rivers and lakes, waiting to be caught, or survive if they're lucky to spawn another generation. But who has lived here over the years to record and document these wonderful animals? Well, Alaska was one of the first places in North America to be set foot in by humans, after they crossed the Bering Land Bridge, which has a national park unit of its own dedicated to it in West Alaska, and began to settle on the new continent. The harsh winters of the last frontier, really the first frontier for these guys, were hard on the early humans, but they were able to adapt to live in the Arctic and eventually spread out across the rest of the continent. Overshadowing the landscape were the two massive mountains, Mount Wrangell and Mount St. Elias. Mount Wrangell was originally given the name, The One Who Controls the Weather, and Mount St. Elias, the second highest mountain in the United States, after Denali, see the card above, was called the mountain behind Icy Bay, a reference to the nearby Glacierville Bay to the south. However, they would acquire their European names whilst under the control of the largest country in the world, Russia. A Russian naval officer by the name of Baron Ferdinand Wrangell, who was hesitant to sell off Russia to the U.S., would attain his name on the mountain, and the entire mountain range, during an exploration of the Copper River, a major waterway near the Wrangell Mountains. Lieutenant Henry Allen named several of the mountains in the range, and Mount Wrangell soon caught on the general European crowds. Mount St. Elias got its second name from a Danish explorer, employed by Russia, named Vitus Bering, yes, the Bering Sea and the Bering Land Bridge are named after him, who saw the mountain as the first site on the Alaskan mainland during his travels. Coincidentally, the day he saw it was on the feast day of St. Elias, a famous Christian saint, and thus the mountain got its name. As more Europeans found their way to Alaska, mass exploitation of the landscape began to occur, before and after purchase by the U.S. in 1867. Mining operations for copper sprung up across the Wrangell St. Elias area, including at the town of Kennecott, which visitors can still tour today as a National Historic Landmark. By the 1930s, however, as in many areas across the nation, conservation efforts were created to protect some of the most historically and naturally valuable spots in the United States. In 1940, the first proposal for Wrangell St. Elias to become a federally protected place arrived on President Franklin D. E. Roosevelt's desk, but because, well, the United States was busy with more pressing matters, the proposal was declined for the moment. As Alaska became a U.S. state in 1959, more calls began to occur from many places around Alaska, including the area of the Wrangell and St. Elias mountain ranches, to come into the custody of the National Park Service or another federally managed land conservation agency. Finally, in 1973, an in-depth look at some 80 million acres of land was made to determine if any of them should become a national park. In 1978, a few areas were selected to become national monuments by President Jimmy Carter, with Wrangell St. Elias among them. The last step to national parkdom came in 1980, with the monumental Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act, which turned a lot of the national monuments into national parks. Today, there are a few roads that go into the national park, meaning most of the vast amount of land in the area is true wilderness. To get a sense of how to navigate this park, stop at the park headquarters near Copper Center, Alaska. Then, travel along the notorious McCarthy Road, an unpaved road which will take you to the small town of McCarthy, the base for all exploration within Wrangell St. Elias. From McCarthy, you can explore the old mines at Kennecott just to the north, embark on adventurous backcountry expeditions where the only path is the one you make, or you can fly over the park in a small airplane, taking in the immense geological and natural wonders from above. Alaska's national parks are often overshadowed, either because they are so isolated from the outside world, or their often frigid temperatures drive potential tourists away. But resilient adventurers will discover the true meaning of the national park system deep in the primitive wilderness of Wrangell St. Elias National Park, a place where reminders of the last ice age still stand, a place where history and nature aren't just museum exhibits, they're everywhere you look. And on that note, this has been RSE Adventures covering America's largest national park, Wrangell St. Elias, briefly. Don't forget to join us for our next National Park video, where we travel to Wyoming to discover the park that started it all, Yellowstone. <laughs>